Hello and welcome to Kick It Play Studio Tutorials. So let's look closer on um, fake rock displacement shader. So in many cases we used quite a bit often in Terrigen this um, shader. This provides excellent of those displacement rocks that cover. However, let's look closer what's happening and if we want to mix a different rocks, which is a better way to do this. So I'm going to create, let's go to shader. We'll go to displacement shader and we'll go to create a fake stone shader. Okay, so we'll go right here and let's just bring in between compute. Okay, and we'll just go select right here. Okay, we can go to disable lighting so we just can preview our rocks. So, right here, it's very simple. We added rocks. Okay, and for example, if I go with these rocks and I say, hey, you know what, I want them will be very large rocks. Okay, and now um, what's happening if I want to add another one, smaller rocks around, and we can go just create another okay, stone shader. And the problem with this, if we connect together, it will won't interact properly because what I want to do, I want to actually use another compute terrain between two of them so that we will calculate set normals and everything and uh, displacement will calculate from already pre-created those rocks. So in this case, they will be more accurate applied because if we done just connect directly like this, put them between you can see we'll start having kind of weird artifacts right here appearing. Okay, because it's go one on top of another ones and they don't look real. If you want for the sci-fi, maybe it's work. But if I want to create more realistic, I want to be sure I've rendered my normals before I use it. So in this case, I will just put it like this. And this way I will have it rocks calculate a bit properly however now i want to create one small one big rocks so let's go with this one we'll go say it's a large rocks in this case and we're going to set this one as a small okay so here are things um, when we're calculating, imagine this, this is our large and this is small. Actually, it's a, does help when you spell properly. Okay. So, and for example, if I go first to the, my small ones. Okay, and we'll go in the small rocks. Okay, let's go set this stone scale smaller and will pop up stone density very high okay so we can kind of preview and you can see the rendering right here we have tons of small rocks maybe we just pop up slightly bigger size so we can see them better and you know let's disconnect it out of large so we just only see the small ones so right here you can see we start having those small rocks. There you go. They all over they make this terrain kind of look very rocky. Okay, and you know what? Just let's go make just a little bit bigger so we can see even easier them. Okay, so what's happening right there? I have it small rocks, I compute them, and I have it now large rocks. I want to connect them here. And uh, because large rocks, and think about this is as a layers, so what's going first, what's going second. The problem is our small rocks now um, will go over large rocks as well. Because what is happening, it's all terrain uh, with rocks. And you can see right here how the, our large rocks now have much more details because the small rocks going over this is actually not bad if you want to add additional details to your large rocks if you want to have it all the terrain kind of um very rocky and 
if you take small rocks and you make more look like a lava, you will can overlay large rocks with this. Think about these other layers. However, if you want to just create a small rocks and large rocks on top, we need to map out those areas. We cannot do currently when it's positioned, so we actually need to switch them. So we need to put it large rocks on the top. Okay, and we need to put it okay let's go put it right here oops wrong place okay so we'll put this right here terrain and there you go so let's reposition so we can see a little bit better so you can see our large rocks going first and small rocks second reason why because we want to use it mask on a small rocks from positioning of the large rocks so we can go from large rocks and go directly to the mask. Okay, and you can see the will kind of small rocks disappear because what's happening right here, we need to invert our mask. So right now the small rocks will be only by the big rocks. So let's go ahead, invert our mask. And as we invert it, now you will notice we have small rocks in other areas and our big rocks will be preserve original shape. So again, in when we're creating, think about this as a layers. If you work with Photoshop on other ones, which one from top, not from the bottom as in Photoshop, is going from top and it's overlay, adding more and more displacements or texture or other shattering go from top to the bottom. Again, so I was using compute so we can calculate properly normal. So it will be properly adjustments. And right here you can see what we created. We have small rocks all over places and we have larger rocks placed. So of course, if we want, we can duplicate these. Okay. Let's select them, copy paste. So we just have it another one. Okay. We can put just similar to what we did before. Let me move this stuff away so we can see a little bit easier. Okay, remember we can put compute here. Okay, and we can take this, maybe put it four. And we can add some additional same as maybe pop up a rock density. We don't need that large. Let's go with the two. And you can see how we can start um, adding more and more interesting effects at this point. With the rocks going over. So let me go ahead and render this. And one of the things I especially left here, you can notice our mask going large on the middle and the small. So it's meaning small and middle will be overlap. If we want to avoid all of them, we need to have a mask go to the middle and from the middle mask going to the small because distribution of those middle wheels will already avoid large ones and other ones. So we can kind of combine. We can use combine node to add middle and large together and produce masking mode this way as well. Okay, so here's render completed. And let's look closer from how it works. So you notice right here we have large rocks. They're right in this area. And they clean because we mask them out of the middle and small. So right here we have it middle rocks. And you notice on top of middle rocks, we have the small rocks because we did not mask these areas. Okay. And of course, all other areas, we have those grids, tons of small rocks. So in this way, kind of help you to understand how the layering work, how they also masking works 
when you start combining with displacement. One thing notice we was using compute terrain. So we can calculate normals and properly um, calculating placements of them. So in one case, when you create a large displacement, be sure using compute terrains between them. So you will achieve a right um, and correct placements when all normals of the displacements calculated properly before apply secondary displacement. Okay, so I, and of course you can modify, we can go to functions and let's go add color black and white. It's what mask going. And we can go to um, connect right here. Middle, connect this one and use it as a mask if we want to remove all of them. Because remember, the mask is going black and white. So it will be our from zero to one. So it will be color. And in this case, we can exclude um, this area where is the middle and large rocks from um, population of the small rocks. So in this case, we can remove them top if you need to do this way. Okay, so thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek at Play Studio. And please remember, visit us on the web is www.geekatplay.com.